From KCRW, this is Here Be Monsters. Now this is our first audio-video episode, and who knows, maybe it's our last. But you can listen to the audio version of this on our podcast feed, or you can watch the video version on our website, hbmpodcast.com. You can choose either, or you can choose both. The choice is yours, but enjoy the show. What follows is a list of ten reasons to leave the house around dusk. 1. Shoes enchanted by an evil wizard. 2. An elemental urge. Example, moth to moonlight. 3. Shoes enchanted by a benign witch. 4. Shoes enchanted by an evil wizard who holds redeeming qualities. Example, the Wizard of Oz. 5. Boredom. 6. Wanderlust. 7. A quest from the divine. 8. Exercise. 9. Drunkenness, or the pursuit thereof. 10. A fishing lure cast by a horrid cosmic enemy. I'm not sure which combination of these factors led me to the train tracks last night, where I took videos of the day ending. I stood next to a tree, and while I was recording, I felt a wet leaf attached to my neck. And for a full minute, I just let it stay there, because I didn't want to ruin the shot. I think the leaf would have surprised me more if I'd been shorter. From a very young age, I, like everyone else, learned that walking alone at night requires essential precautions against vampires and their ilk. And while some choose to buy guns or rub aioli on their crucifixes or what have you, I usually leave the house unprotected, lucky to have grown tall enough to keep my jugular out of reach from all but the tallest vampires. And so I finished taking the video, peeled the leaf off my neck, and then walked on to go swim through the setting dark. Here Be Monsters, the podcast about the two opposite edges of the universe. The podcast about the unknown. Of course, there are other kinds of vampires, too. I learned this during my insomniac years when I would stay up late to listen to a strange AM radio program that told me what no one else would. God rest your soul, Art Bell. I listened, and I learned about vampires who have no need for accessible jugulars, a rare species of the family vampira that don't thirst for blood. No, they drink human life force. They're foul specimens, more vapor than shape, incapable of generating their own joy, their own energy, they must instead harvest it from others. And so they sit and wait, sometimes for months or years or centuries. And like a mosquito, they have anesthetic on their metaphysical fangs, which they can wriggle painlessly into your id, taking as much as their empty veins can hold and then more. They discard you, leave you to become a dried up husk on the brink of psychical death and then they move on to their next victim, drunk on a surge of energy, then more human husks, then more drunkenness, then another hundred years of sleep, or so I've heard. My height doesn't offer me any protection from these hideous creatures, nor did the crucifix I used to wear, nor the garlic fries. So I've dedicated the last 12 years of my life to uncovering the strange proclivities of astral energy vampirism. And I've found ways to exploit those proclivities as weaknesses. Right now we are in a crisis of astral energy vampirism, and yet no one is talking about it. 
Right now I'm tempted to speak at length regarding the cover-up, which I suspect runs all the way to the top, but I try to keep this feed from becoming blatantly partisan. So for now, we'll just stick to the verifiable facts. So what follows is a three-phase spell for entrapping, then diverting, and then repulsing astral energy vampires. It's a work in progress, it's not perfect, but much experimentation has taught me that spell casting is more similar to baking than it is to cooking. So if you're following along at home, I urge you to use intense caution before subbing the pecorino for parmesan or what have you. I just can't guarantee your results if you improvise. Phase one, attraction. Begin with a space, a space of unusually square dimensions, 50 feet wide by 50 feet deep with concrete floors and walls. Make sure that the cars have left for the day and keep ambient noise to a minimum. The space you'll need is sized as such to generate a resonant tone of approximately 138 hertz. That's a C3 sharp. You could go as high as the E or as low as the B, but no further in either direction. In the exact center of the space, you might find a storm drain. Kneel down next to it. Now, take stock of your surroundings. Look towards a wall. Focus on the negative space between you and the wall. The space filled by air and dust. And if they've spotted you already, it's possible that in this space, you'll see the ether thickening around you. Remove one shoe. Give it a tap. You'll hear that flutter echo. That's the sound of a time portal opening. And Narcissus weeping for the sound of lost love. And possibly an angel, and possibly the dead but mostly the repugnant beasts of the astral plane. The ether ought to be thick by now. We've announced our presence and set the table. Now it's time to move quickly. Phase two, diversion. At this point, it's imperative to add some personal mementos to the spell. I recommend vacation videos shot when you are an age that you now consider young. I think this works because wistfulness and melancholy are irresistible baits for these wretched vampires. Feelings of nostalgia generate a split in your timeline, which they will chase fruitlessly, reeling through the multiverse in search of a pristine past that likely never existed. Add now some videos shot before you were born. You get out of here. <laughs> hey, have you ever seen me dive off? No, I <laughs> think And some videos with people that you've never met. Now that, that's the sound on it too, right? Right. And if you must, you can add a few seconds of stock footage. The ether ought to be clearing by now. Phase three, repulsion. Being deathless creatures, any attack would be fruitless and foolhardy. So instead, with these corrupt parasites lost in the past, we must now seal off the time portal we created back in phase one. And we must also disincentivize their return journey to our time code. So fill your bathtub with blood, whatever kind you have on hand. Cold works best. Purchase or borrow a tactile transducer and attach it to the outside of the bathtub. This will require cutting a 70 millimeter hole and attaching several screws. Do not attempt this step if you lack electrical know-how as there's a serious risk for electrocution, which incidentally also voids this magic.
It's worth mentioning that the transducer that you purchase does not necessarily need to be of top quality, just large enough to reproduce a very intense vibration around 40 Hz. Run a sine wave through your transducer, nearing maximum output. Play a nice harmony with the resonant tone from phase one. Now, dip your body underneath and say the Pledge of Allegiance seven times. Then visualize yourself holding the two opposite edges of the universe. Now fold it in half like a sheet. Now fold it again. You'll feel the time portal begin to close and your cosmic foes being locked away in the past. You'll feel a sense of calm that should continue for the next three to five days until your new found surplus of positive vibrations return back to baseline. Now as I wrote this, I thought for a moment that I should hear, now at the end of the spell, give some instructions for defense if you're ever caught in a moment without your square space or your nostalgia archive or your tactile transducer. And I really wish I had more to say on this topic, and I hope you don't think that I'm a complete fraud. I've been lucky to avoid close altercations with vampires, physical, psychic, or astral. Needless to say, that the spell must be working. My name is Jeff Entman. I produce this episode of Here Be Monsters. If you'd like to learn more about astral vampirism and why it's a bad idea to let electricity near your bathtub, we'll have information up on our website, which is hbmpodcast.com. Many thanks to Brian Entman and Ariana Nettleman, who lent me some video equipment to play with on this episode. Actually, before I started this podcast, I was a photographer, and so it was kind of fun to um, dip my toes back in that world for a second. But what did you think? Should we keep making more video episodes next season? You can let us know on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter. And actually, I've got another question for you. Last week, I posted a new design for a Here Be Monsters sweatshirt up on our Instagram. And I actually meant it as a joke design, but a bunch of people wrote in to say that they actually wanted one. So if you're up on Instagram, if you follow us, um, please check out that design and let us know if we should actually get a whole batch of those printed. We're on Instagram at HBM Podcast. Okay, music on this episode came from The Black Spot, Sarocell, and the other stars. I had editing help from Bethany Denton. Here Be Monsters is a part of KCRW's independent producer project, where Nick White is our editor and Kristen Lepore is our manager. Thanks for listening. More episodes soon. Mm-hmm.